All right, hi everyone. Olivia Reiner here with Ryan Wood coming at you after the Packers' victory over the Falcons. Ryan, Joe Philbin, first time play calling since 1996 when he was at Northeastern. What did you make of his day today? Well, he did a good job of getting this offense into a rhythm from the very beginning. I thought especially that first series that the passing game was on schedule. Uh, Aaron Rodgers getting the ball out quicker than we've, what we've seen really probably all season. And from there, it only improved. And they were 7-13 to 13 on third down today, which was the biggest stat in the game. They've been dreadful on third down basically all year. But they were plus 50% today. Uh, they, you know, Lance Kendrick said that they, they really stressed third down this week. They got more plays, third down plays in their practice than what they've had. Uh, another big difference, I think, is that they went with a lot more personnel groupings. I mean, there were a lot more substitutions that you saw today, um, which just, it, 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 like, like Lance Kendrick said, it, it, it keeps the defense honest. Um, and I, I think they just did a better job of taking what the defense gave. Uh, the Falcons were a man-to-man -man a lot. You saw Aaron Rodgers take advantage of that with his legs from time to time. Uh, there were big plays today, and at times there were extended plays, but they were much more on schedule, much more in better timing, better rhythm. Uh, it, third downs one stat, set, th a trio of 70-yard touchdown uh, drives today. Only the third time that's happened, first time since L.A., and also happened in the opener against Chicago. Just gives you an idea. I mean, this offense has been moving the ball all year. They haven't been finishing those long drives in, in, in the end zone. They did that today. Now, Andy wants to talk about the first drive the refs and their uh, calls on those, what ended up being complete catches. Mm -hmm. Of course, Joe Philbin threw his flag twice, completely getting rid of any other opportunity in the future for the rest of the game to throw a challenge flag. What did you make of those plays? Well, Joe Philbin poked a little bit of fun at himself after the game, um, acknowledging that especially the second flag was premature and really there wasn't much to be gained out of that. He, I think he said something along the lines of, he had a lot of big decisions to make today. Just figured he'd get those out of the way early. Um, but yeah, with 13:37 left in the first quarter, they were out of challenges. Not what you want. I, I still kind of think, and I don't know what they said on the telecast. I still kind of think that the refs missed it with the first one. It, it looked like Jair Alexander got the ball. It got his hand between uh, Julio Jones's fans and got the ball out. Uh, the second one was too close to call. I, I think to me, the second challenge was a lot more of a head scratch than the first one. Now, Mohammed wants to bring up that the Packers are still mathematically alive in the playoff hunt. I know I haven't crunched the numbers. I don't know if you have. But that was certainly something that Aaron Rodgers discussed during his, his postgame chat, whether or not that impacted the, the way that the Packers were approaching this week, knowing that their playoff hopes were still alive. What did he have to say about that? Aaron Rodgers said that they hadn't mentioned it all week. He did say, he did make note that they are mathematically alive and that they're getting some help from teams. Um, but they're, they're mathematically – I mean, Santa Claus parachuted in during halftime today. So, you know, that, that's basically they, – they would need a Christmas miracle, uh, and, and it's not going to happen. So th this team isn't going to the playoffs. The season is over. Today was, you know, if you believe in such things as winning every game that you can and being professional, today was very promising. Overall, there's not a lot of ramifications for what just took place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if Santa can fly, who knows? <laughs> Who something. knows? Uh, Omar is pointing out Jimmy Graham's play today. He certainly uh, had some uh, incomplete passes his way. What did you think about Jimmy Graham's play today? Yeah, he had a chance to make a play on the, the deep ball there. He's won, won single coverage and, and couldn't haul it in. Just seems like Jimmy Graham hasn't been able to make get one of those plays to go for him. You know, he he elicited some applause near the end of the game where he caught a third down catch for a first down. That's kind of where he is right now. A third down catch is enough to really get the crowd stirring. It's it's not where you, of course, would have thought that he'd be at the beginning of the season. Hasn't produced to the level expected, and uh, it was another rough day for him. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are calling you a negative Nancy uh, <laughs> in yeah, the comments. Well, go ahead. To be expected, of course. Uh, Bashad Breeland, someone who uh, uh, didn't play last week, had an interception and a uh, pick six this week. What do you make of not only his play today, but also what his future might look like here in Green Bay. He had the fumble recovery, too. So I think a pair – is that right? I think, I think he had the, yeah, the fumble recovery on the aborted play. So yeah. a pair of turnovers today. Defensively, they've talked about the next step they need to make. I mean, they're not blowing coverages like you've seen the past couple of years. There's been real improvement, but they need to make big game-changing plays. And when it's 10-7 – 
and you get a pick six, that's a big game-changing play. Um, so more than just, you know, Bashad Breeland finally got a, a Lambo leap, which I'm sure is a good moment. He was clutching that ball. He was not letting go of that ball. It's a good moment for him. The fact that defensively they, they did what they said that they needed to do, I think, is, is very promising. The defense, they gave up 20 points, but one was a garbage time touchdown. Really, after the Falcons got off their opening script, they, the defense was really good. We've seen that from, from the defense quite a bit this year, is that they struggle against the opponent's opening script, but then they are able to make those early game adjustments and, and recover from that. And if they can start a little bit better, this, this defense is in a decent place. Uh, speaking of the defense, someone had just mentioned Clay Matthews played like maybe he was uh, playing for a contract out there today. What did you think about Matthews today? Yeah, his first sack since uh, Los Angeles in late October. He's now got three and a half. Uh, he's he's actually played pretty well. Like you see three and a half sacks on the season in game 13, and you think that he's had a miserable year. It's been better than, than what the stat sheet would indicate. He's just not a dominant double-digit pass rusher anymore. I mean, that's, that's fine. There's not a lot of those guys in the league that can do that. Um, but he's still a decent, serviceable player. He still can make plays, and he did that again today, and he's been doing that the past couple weeks. Credit to Rob on that last question. I apologize. Your, your comments come in quite quickly, and sometimes I cannot catch all of your names. But thank you, Rob. Appreciate the question. Please uh, keep sending them in. Um, what do you think about Randall Cobb? He had his first touchdown today since Week one against the Bears. I have not seen a Randall Cobb touchdown until today. Yeah, he, you know the the play that that sticks out to me the most, and that was a really you know that that touchdown was interesting because Devontae Adams was wide open underneath. I mean, there was you go back and watch the replay. There was nobody around him. He was as open on that play. For, it was a third down. And it would have been an easy first down as Aaron Jones was in Seattle. If you remember that play uh, when when Aaron Rodgers didn't throw the ball. This time he goes for the big play, Aaron Rodgers, and it's it's a good route, really good throw uh, for a touchdown. But the, but the play that stood out to me the most today was the eight yard early in the game, the the eight yard quick hit up the seam on first and ten that set up a second and two. I mean that that's kind of the the type of play that that got this offense into rhythm. We just we haven't seen those quick hitters uh, like that, those quick slants. We, we, we haven't seen. It, it looked like a West Coast offense today, and it hasn't looked like a West Coast offense for a really long time. Saran wants to talk about, if, I, if that is how you pronounce your name, uh, wants to talk about um, Aaron Rodgers breaking Tom Brady's uh, most attempts without an interception. How, Got a little lucky there. He did. He came close. I mean, he he's, did. he's come close a few times yeah. the past few weeks. Came close again today, but somehow managed to pull it off. I think there were two drop picks. And the first one came before the record. That would have been a pick six. It was right after the, the Breland pick six. Uh, Aaron Rodgers kind of said it. I mean, you, you need a little luck to go 370-some-odd throws without throwing an interception. You need some luck. You got some luck. Um, but on the season now, he's 23-1, and one, touchdown-interception ratio. Pretty good. Pretty good. I know he gets flack and he gets criticism for – not forcing the ball in there more and risking more interceptions, but that that really is the point of quarterback plays to make big plays and eliminate the mistakes. And no one in the history of the game has done it better than Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah, we're gonna take a few more questions, you guys. We're under some deadlines tonight, so we're we're only keeping this a, l a little bit shorter than usual. But we appreciate your questions nonetheless. Rob wants to know. What are the chances that Jordy Nelson would come back next year? I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> They're really well stocked. This is the same reason why I don't see Randall Cobb coming back if if you had to make a call in December. Is It's just because they're really well stocked with young talent at receiver. Equinemia St. Brown had a decent game today. Marquez Valdez Scantling has had a decent game today. They both have had good seasons uh, for rookies. And, and giving them an, another year to mature. And let's not forget that Geronimo Allison, who was really primed for a big year, uh, it's coming back on on injury reserve. They go pretty deep with young talent there. I, I don't think they're going to they're 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 going to continue the the youth movement they have. Mm -hmm. What did you make of the utilization of the? We talked a little bit about the tight ends that all got some reps today. They're quite a variety. How did you sort of make of make of, what did you make of their play across the? Board? I thought they were clearly defined roles, and that's what Aaron Rodgers said at the end. It's what you know, I said earlier about Lance Kendrick saying the the more ver variety in their, their personnel groupings, uh, 
Aaron Rodgers said there was there was a role for Jimmy Graham, there was a role for Lance Kendricks, there was a role for Mercedes Lewis, there was um, a, a role for for Robert Tanyan. Those guys all had their their role, their lane, and they were able to stick in it. And in doing that, they it, it does keep it, it does help you to manipulate the matchups and and stuff like that with the defense, especially defense playing as much man to man as the Falcons did. Last question, Tyler wants to know whether or not Aaron Rodgers' performance today impacts the narrative of the Rodgers being better without Mike McCarthy. I don't think so. It, look, it's not like he went out there and threw 450 yards and five touchdowns. This wasn't like 2014 Aaron Rodgers. It, it, he was good. He wasn't at the peak of his game by any means. Um, I think that there are real tangible reasons for why this offense looked better than it has for large portions of this season. Third down, start starting with that, that's paramount. They actually converted on third down. They talk about the execution. Execution shows up in situational football never more clearly than third down, and being a 7 to 13 is big. Um, they, they, they finished drives. They, they, had, they did have different personnel groupings, and they did throw on, uh, more on, on time, and, and they were on schedule. But part of that is just how the Falcons played them defensively with all the man-to-man that they, that they saw. Um, so, it, yeah, I, I, I think there's real tangible reasons other than the narrative of oh, Mike McCarthy's gone, so Aaron Rodgers is going to play better. A lot of factors involved. Uh, Packers finally got a win this weekend. Um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed us. Hopefully you, enjoy, you were here for pregame. We appreciate you being here for postgame. It was great talking with you guys. We appreciate all of your questions. Of course, there's tons more content over on PackersNews.com, so please Go check it out. Go read our stories. We'll have some videos up for you guys later as well. We appreciate you joining us here tonight. Have a really good one.